What's up Clarity Coders? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a Next.js app. This is Next.js 14 and get a light mode, dark mode, theming, all running in under 10 minutes, I hope. I haven't timed this. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up a new terminal and create our project. So I'm gonna CD into my projects directory. That's where I wanna create it. And then I'm going to do MPX, create Next app at 14. 0.1.0. If you're following along, use the same version as I'm using. You can use at latest. It's probably fine while we're in Next.js 14. But if you have any issues, try and use the exact same version. We can call this dark mode. We'll use TypeScript. We'll use ZSLint. We'll use Tailwind CSS. We won't use the source directory. We'll use the app router. And we don't want to customize our default aliases. Now this obviously assumes that you have Node.js installed. That's how we use that npx command. If you don't, install Node.js first. While this is installing, I'm also going to reference one extension here. If you're not using it, I recommend it for boilerplate. It's ES7 plus React Redux React Native Snippets, and it's from D-S-Z-N-A-J-D-E-R. Now that we have that installed, navigate to that folder wherever you installed it and let's open it up. So I went into my folder structure here and we'll open folder and I'll see you once you have it open. Now, once you have it open, you should have a structure that looks something like this. We're going to edit some code here, but I'm gonna open up a new terminal and we're gonna use one other library. The library that I've been playing around with a lot is ShadCNUI. Let's check that out. So what's cool about ShadCNUI is it's allowing you to build your own component library from their components. So you're not gonna do an NPM install and manage a bunch of packages. You can actually import the components directly into your code and then work with them, manipulate them however you want. So let's head over to ui.shadcn.com, hit the docs, and we'll hit installation and we'll choose Next.js. Now the first is going to show you how to install and create your Next.js project. We've already done that. Let's install shadcnui. So I'm gonna grab the second command npm and back in our code. I'm going to paste that into our terminal. Now we'll go through some prompts here. We'll just use most of the defaults, I think. So we'll use default, slate. Do you wanna use variable names for colors? Yes. We have the structure now to do theming. So let's take a quick look at the app folder and then our global CSS. Now here you'll see that they've defined some colors for us. You'll see background, foreground, card, card foreground. And if you slide down, you'll also see that they've implemented a dark mode as well. I'll close out of this so we can see it better. So you can see all the different variables that you, that you have available to you here. So the first thing we can do is back on shadcnui, we can go back to themes and here we can pick out one we like. So let's say we like this red one here. We can do copy code. You can also do customize and pick from a larger list here if you'd like. So I'm gonna hit copy code and then you'll see this is the at layer base. So it's that same code that we were checking out. This is just for that red theme that I picked out. So I'm gonna hit copy here. Now back in our code, I will scroll up. So we wanna grab that at layer base, copy all the way to the bottom. We don't want to remove this at layer base below, however. So we should have something that looks like that and we'll paste in our new code. So now we should have the new style that we wanna use in our application. Now, if we go back to the docs here, we can click on dark mode and we can select Next.js. Now, one of the things that we have to do is wrap our entire application with a theme provider, and that's going to use client. So we're gonna separate it into a new component. So let's copy this code. And then back in our code here, in my components folder, I can create a new file and I can call it theme-provider.tsx. And I can paste in that code we borrowed. And you can see that it's a little mad at me. It needs next themes. So let's open up a new terminal. We were gonna do that anyways. And it actually covers that in the documentation. I skipped that step. So we can install next themes. So let's paste that in here. That should take care of our issues there, which it did. And now we can go back to our layout.tsx. And here we can wrap our entire application. So I'm gonna go inside the body here with theme tags from that 
component. They have an example one here. We can steal that. So I'm gonna copy this theme provider tag and I'll paste it after our body tag. And then right here after that children, I can close that theme provider tag. And here, a little trick, if you click in here and hit control dot, we can add an import. We don't want the import from next themes, so we can add the import from at components theme provider. And that looks good. So let's control S. Now, if you're wondering how I'm formatting so quickly like this, this is called Prettier. It's another extension you can use and that I use religiously to clean up my code. Now, I don't want the default theme to be a system choice. I wanna say I want the default theme to be dark. I prefer dark themes, so we'll set that if you would like. And then from here, let's open up our page component. This has a bunch of nonsense in it. Let's delete it out. If you're using that React Code Snippet extension, you can do R-A-F-C-E. And here, this will create you some boilerplate and I'll do dashboard for my page. Now you can also just type this out, just a little cheat I do to make it a little quicker here. And now if we do npm run dev and start our server, then we can navigate to our new fancy application. And as you can see, we're at least in dark mode. Uh, we can't switch or anything like that, but we got a cool blank application here. And it is themed, even though it doesn't look like it. So here, for example, I can do p tags, paste that around here. I can do class name, and then using Tailwind, I can do text dash primary to set the color. And if I go back, you'll notice it's taken our theme color there. But first, I have an exciting new course out that I wanna show you and get to you for cheap or free. Now, if you like this tutorial and you wanna take it to the next level and build totally custom applications from start to finish, I have a brand new ticketing tutorial on Udemy that you can check out right now. If you click the link above, we have a discount on version for $13 that will walk you through the entire process. And one thing I wanted to do for my listeners on YouTube is to ensure that if you can't afford that price, you have a free way to view the tutorial as well. So check out the website, log in, and I have a thousand, the first thousand get free access to this tutorial. It's over six hours. It involves everything from server-side pagination, authentication, Tailwind CSS, Shad CNUI, everything you need to start creating your own applications. Check it out, let me know what you think. Okay, so our theming is working. I don't really want that, so I'm gonna delete that out. Control S. Inside our components directory, let's make a new file called nav.tsx. Here we can do our RAFCE. And then we can set up a basic navigation and then a light mode and dark mode on top of that. So let's do nav tags. So we'll do lowercase nav here. Then inside that, we can do a div. This is gonna control all of our navigation. So here, we can set our class name to flex, flex column. Let's have our navigation centered so we can have items center. After it, let's have a border on the bottom and a margin bottom of five. Let's say we want padding of five as well and our background to be secondary color, okay? So then here, for this div, we can say our class name is flex and we want to justify between our items. I don't want it to be the full screen if you're on a huge monitor. So the max size, the max width I want it to be is 6XL, but I want it to be the full width otherwise. Now inside of here, we can have two sets of divs. The first divs can be our navigation menu. And then the second can be log out, log in, dark mode, that sort of thing. We're not gonna do all that, but I'll show you here. So let's start typing a link tag and we can slide down and tab on this, the next link one, and you'll see it does our auto import. Now links have to have an href. So here we can just set it to go to our root page. And here we can set dashboard as a link. And these are gonna be kind of bogus links for right now, but I will paste, paste. We'll do users and tickets. 
And then let's copy a couple of these and we can say down here, we want this to be login. And this can be our toggle for light to dark. Delete that extra one. All right, that's looking good. Let's get it in our project. So on the layout tab, back on the layout tab, let's add this nav to every page. So we wanna add it here. So I'm gonna start typing nav. My auto import is going to be from at components nav. This is what it looks like if your IntelliSense doesn't work. We can close that tag. And now if we go back to our project, You'll see it's really not pretty, but you'll see our different background color up here and all of our links are mushed together. So back in our code, let's quickly, I don't know where I'm at in time. I gotta, I gotta be going over items center for this and let's do a gap of five and let's copy this to our other set here as well. Quick look. Oh, much better. So that all looks good. Now, what if we wanna do a little styling along with our theme? I know I'm adding more, I'm feature creep right now. So let's go global CSS. Say we wanna hover effect for all of our A tags. We can add an A here and we can say at apply. Let's say we want a hover and the text to be primary like that. So now if we go back, all of our links should have a nice hover effect. I don't know if I'd call it nice, but they have a hover effect. All right, let's get to the bread and butter of what we wanted to do here. Now our nav right now is a server rendered page. You'll see how we're not saying use client. We need our toggle mode to be client side. So I'm gonna create a new component called toggle mode.tsx. In this component, we can do RAFCE, and at the top, the one difference we want to do is we need to use client for this component. Now let's kill this terminal. And from Shad CN UI, we also want to use the button component. So you see we have a nice cute little button here. It's easy to use. Let's copy this. That's the MPX Shad CN UI at latest add button. And I'll show you how this component library works. It's really great. There's no way this is under 10 minutes. So you'll see it creates a UI folder here and the button code. Now this component is, is now part of your component library. So they want you to be able to manipulate it and use it how you would like. You can see the code, how it works. And you can even use this to set up your own buttons down the road. So we're gonna use this in our toggle mode to create a moon and a light button. So we need to keep track of some state so here we're gonna get react. We can also get use state and use effect. Now you actually don't have to import react, so you don't really have to do that, but we're also gonna import use theme and this is from next themes. So I'm gonna tab there. Watch out for that extra curly bracket. We're going to import moon and sun from lucid-react. This is either part of the themes that we installed or part of Shad CNUI, I can't remember, but we're gonna use those icons. And then we'll import button from dot slash UI slash button. So we're just importing our own component there. This should be a capital B actually. Now inside our toggle mode, we need to get our theme and we need to be able to set theme and that's from use theme. Okay, so this is gonna tell us what our current theme is and this is gonna allow us to change our theme. Now we also need to keep track of whether our component is mount mounted or not. That's because we need to know if it's mounted so we can determine what the what the current theme is. And these should actually be square brackets. I apologize for that. This is going to be our state. So we'll throw those square brackets. That looks better. Got rid of our air. Then all we need to do is use effect to determine if this is mounted or not. Once this runs, then we'll know set mounted can be 
true. So if it's not mounted, let's just return a button where the variant equals. Now, if you look at the variant in TypeScript, we'll give you all the types so you don't have to look through it, but you can see that there's options for default, destructive, ghost buttons, link, outline, or secondary. Now we're using secondary as a background color, so I'm gonna use secondary here. You can play around with those choices. Let's set the size equal to icon. Disabled equal to true, right? Because our component's not mounted yet, so we don't want them to actually click on it. And we can just leave it like this. It'll just be a blank button. So that's if it's not mounted. And that's because if it's not mounted, I can't tell what our current theme is. So then we can say const dark equals, let's look at our theme and see if it equals dark. Okay, so we're doing some conditional here. So if this is true, so if theme does equal dark, then our dark variable will be true. If it's light or something else, dark will be false. And now we can simply return our button here. So here we can do return button, just like that. And we're gonna have a variant of secondary a size equal to icon. And on click, we're gonna have an inline function. And here we can just say set theme. And we can do some conditional rendering here. So we're gonna use back ticks, dollar sign, and curly bracket. And then we're gonna say dark question, do something or do something else. So if dark is true, we want to set the theme to light if you push the button. If dark is false, we want you to set the theme to dark if you push the button. Awesome. So this would function now, but we need icons, right? So let's do some conditional rendering here to decide which icon to display. So again, we're gonna do dark and question mark. If it's dark, we're gonna do something. Otherwise, we'll do something else. So if it's dark, I want to display our sun icon. And if it's not dark, I want to display our moon icon. So basically it's gonna display the opposite of what it's currently set on. Here we can add just a little bit of styles. We can say we want our hover to have a cursor dash pointer so it looks like you can click it and the hover can be text dash primary something like that let's copy this and use it for the moon as well paste it here let's do npm run dev now we got our server started but we have to actually use this component i didn't do that so let's go back to nav and instead of this toggle link let's delete that out and let's start typing toggle mode I'm gonna slide down and then tab for the autocomplete on that component. And we'll do a self-closing tag there. This is the import if it didn't do it automatically for you. Now back in our project, you might have to do a hard refresh. And you'll see we got our hovers, we got our light icon, which is good because we are in dark mode. And if I push that, you'll see we flip over to light mode. You'll see our secondary color changes. Everything still looks good and shows up. You'll notice that this changes from white text that you can see to black text you can see in dark mode. That's it. That's how we can implement dark mode, light mode, and theming in Next.js 14 using Shad CN UI. Until next time, keep coding.